In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Thursday, the 13th of June, 2024, 10th week in Ordinary Time, and today we keep the memorial of St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony was first of all an Augustinian monk. And I want to let you know that it is from the Augustinians that Martin Luther, the one who protested against certain doctrines of the Catholic faith, belonged. He belonged to that congregation of the Augustinians as Father Martin Luther. And St. Anthony of Padua was one of them but now he was so impressed by the martyrdom of five Franciscans who had been spreading the faith in Morocco that he became a Franciscan friar himself so that he could preach the gospel in Africa as well. Illness obliged him to leave Morocco and a storm then drove his ship to Sicily so that he found himself taking part in the general chapter of the Franciscans in 1221 where he met St. Francis of Assisi himself. His preaching career then took him to northern Italy and southern France, then a stronghold of the Habigensian heresy. Later, he returned to Italy, to Padua, where he was an outstanding preacher and the first Franciscan theologian. His sermons are full of gentleness, but he reproved the wicked with fearless severity, especially backsliding clergy and the oppressors of the weak. His shrine is a center of pilgrimage and is also the patron saint of the lost and found. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Brenda Nana Shinyela from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Justina Memunatu from Freetown, Sierra Leone, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Patrick Peter Mortelang, who celebrated his priestly anniversary yesterday from Jos Archdiocese in Nigeria. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave St. Anthony of Padua to your people as an outstanding preacher and an intercessor in their need, grant that with his assistance, as we follow the teachings of the Christian life, we may know your help in every trial. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, Elijah prayed and I the heaven gave rain. A reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 18, verses 41 to 46. In those days, Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the rushing of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he bowed himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And at the seventh time he said, Behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising out of the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. And in a little while the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 65 verses 10 A, B, C, D 10 C to 11 12 to 13 Response is taken from Psalm 65 verse 2 A, B and the response is Praise is due to you in Zion, O God. Praise is due to you in Zion, O God. You visit the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches. God's ever-flowing river brings over to prepare the green. Praise is due to you in Zion, O God. And thus you provide for the earth. You drench it for us. You level it, soften it with showers. You bless its good. Praise is due to you in Zion, O God. You crown the year with your bounty. Abundance flows in your pathways. In pastures of the desert it flows. The hills are guarded with joy. Praise is due to you in Zion, O God. Gospel acclamation. John chapter 13, verse 34. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20 to 26. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Unless your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the men of old, You shall not kill. And whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. And whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council. And whoever say you fool shall be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering a gift at the altar, and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Make friends quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hang you over to the judge and the judge to the guard. You be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out till you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are on the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus has made it clear that there is so much power in the word such that we don't have to change anything that the word tells us. But we need to modify. We need to work on something that was said only for those who wanted to fulfill the minimum of the law. Jesus is a new Moses. And he knows that people have been comfortable with living a religion of the minimum. He realizes that many people don't go beyond religion. They are settled with religion and they don't know that there is spirituality behind that religion. Even scripture. We may read scripture, but if we are not reading it spiritually, we may end up just reading it as a material to study, not as an inspiration that points to the transformation of our lives. Jesus now turns to the same scriptures they had been reading for so long and they did not understand. 
They were comfortable with just reading scripture without interpreting it and applying it to their own lives. And so now he turns to them and he says, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The scribes and Pharisees were comfortable with just following the letter of the law and not the spirituality of the law. You have said, you have heard that it was said to the men of old, you shall not kill, and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, killing is not just about the physical killing, which may not even affect the one you are killing, because once that person is gone, that's it. You haven't done any harm to that person. But the worst is what we do to those who are living. Reducing them to nothing. That is the worst. And I want you to get back to this. Don't torture people by the language you use. Don't make people feel little because that is very bad. And so the Lord says, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment because Jesus knows anger is what causes certain actions that make us come to regret later. I should not have done that. Oh no, I should not have said that. I said it out of anger. But once you say it, it's already said. It cannot be unsaid. Once you do something, it's already done. It cannot be undone. No one has the power to undo the past. Not even God. Don't be shocked by that statement. God doesn't have power to undo the past. He has power to repair your future when you entrust everything in his hand and you rely on his word as did Elijah. Elijah is teaching us so many lessons in chapter 18 of the first book of Kings. He wants the people to rely on the power of the word. There is drought. Remember, he had said there will be drought and so there was And now he went back because he wanted to build the faith of Ahab. To say, listen, you see what I have done to the gods of Baal? It is nothing compared to what God can do when you rely on his power. And I want to let you know, there is power in the word. There is power in what we say and believe. Because even faith is the word. You cannot have faith unless you rely on the power of the word of God. You rely on the word that assures you that things are going to work out. The word that makes it clear to you that even in that tiny cloud, there will be rain. I don't know what tiny cloud you have in your life. There is a sign showing out there. But a very tiny cloud, believe in that tiny cloud, things are going to work out. You have been trying to have a spouse. And there is a man out there who seems to be looking at you and uh, you think nothing is going to work out. Believe in that tiny cloud and start behaving already like a married woman. Return your decency, even in your social media platforms. Change the way you present yourself. You are already married to that man. You have been looking for a child. And there is a tiny cloud that doesn't show any sign of you having a child in your marriage. Believe in that tiny cloud and already start behaving as a woman going to have a child. So buy those nappies. Buy the clothes that are supposed to be bought. Like somebody moving with an umbrella when there is only a tiny cloud and he hasn't heard any report from the meteorological department that there will be rain. That is faith. Oh my word, it is faith that moves mountain. And when you have the faith like that of Elijah, you are going to see rain falling upon the dry grounds of your life. God does that. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Thursday to you and happy memorial of St. Anthony of Padua. Thanks be to God.